let's talk about uh, building your first workflow bot using Teams Toolkit for Visual Studio Code. A little bit about me. My name is Gary Trinder, Cloud Developer Advocate at Microsoft. Joined Microsoft. I did lots of development and consultancy and architecture beforehand, was an MVP. Uh, if you've not checked out the CLI for Microsoft 365, please check it out. I'm also a maintainer there. Uh, if you want to follow me uh, about Microsoft 365 dev, then you can get me on the socials. You'll find me mainly on Twitter, but obviously if you're not on Twitter anymore, uh, there are plenty of the socials around and you can get the, the rest of my details from, uh, from my link tree. Just wanted to cover a really small agenda. Um, first, going to go through uh, what the workflow bot is, introduce Teams Toolkit for Visual Studio Code, if you don't know what that is. We'll go through how we create our first uh, project, have a quick uh, run through um, of the, the, the project and how you can run that uh, bot for the first time. Um, and what I'm going to do is actually I'm going to do a bit of a live coding uh, session. I'm gonna, we're going to build an order form uh, to really show off the uh, the new feature um, that, uh, that we're going to talk about today, which is the, the workflow bot. So uh, workflow bot, what is a workflow bot? Uh, well, workflow bot is is actually, it's, it's a new feature that's been released in the latest version of Teams Toolkit for Visual Studio Code. Um, essentially, this workflow bot is designed to make it really easy for you to capture responses um, from users in Microsoft Teams. So you might send them an adaptive card with an action on there or maybe a mini form. And you want them, to, uh, you want the users to uh, enter information, uh, submit that and how you capture that back um, is has not been trivial. So um, this workflow bot approach in Teams Toolkit for Visual Studio Code just really, really simplifies that. And I'll show a, a Great example of, a, of an order form uh, later on, which we'll, which we'll go through. So I mentioned Teams Toolkit. Um, so this is what we're going to use to build our workflow bot. Um, if you don't know what Teams Toolkit uh, Visual Studio Code is, it's a, a Visual Studio Code extension that you can install from the marketplace, which gives you um, functionality uh, to uh, create, debug, and publish your Teams apps to your Microsoft uh, 365 tenant. It supports JavaScript and TypeScript um, as well. Um, if you are interested in Teams development, but not interested in JavaScript or TypeScript, there is a Visual Studio uh, version of Teams Toolkit as well. Uh, so if you're in .NET and C Sharp, uh, check that out. But for day, today, we're going to look at the, uh, the JavaScript and TypeScript uh, versions. So uh, let's just go straight into uh, the demo. So I'm going to show you uh, quickly how to create this, uh, this initial uh, project. So I'm just going to move into uh, Visual Studio Code. Uh, so if you haven't installed Teams Toolkit, like I mentioned, you can simply go to the marketplace, search for Teams Toolkit, select that. Um, so you see 4.1.1. Uh, is the latest version. Um, so as long as you're running 4.1.0, you'll have the ability to create this, this workflow bot, which I'm going to show you. So once you've installed that, uh, you'll have the Teams Toolkit icon on the left-hand side, which gives you the ability to create a new Teams app or actually create samples that have already been created in a gallery. We'll quickly just go through the steps of how to create this workflow bot. So click New Teams App button, click, uh, click create new Teams app again. And in here in the scenario-based uh, Teams app selection screen, uh, we've got the workflow bot, which is which is new. So let's select this. Uh, like I mentioned, we've got options of two languages, JavaScript or TypeScript. I quite like TypeScript, so I'm going to choose that. Um, and we need to basically give a location of where our project is going to be created. So I'm just going to use the default folder for now. And uh, I'll just give it a name, and we'll call it Community Call. And Teams Toolkit is going to go away and it's going to scaffold a new project, which it's just done. And it's going to open that up for us. And it will also open up a README file with some information about this template as well. And so, you know, if you're coming to this and uh, after the call, potentially, and you want to look through, there's tons of information here, which just describes about the project, what the individual files are and, 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 and how you can uh, extend it. I'm just going to quickly cover uh, what these uh, folders are that it's uh, generated. So we've got an FX folder. So this is where the Teams Toolkit configuration lives. Uh, we've got the VS Code um, uh, folder, um, which um, is uh, all the 
debug settings, debug profiles for, um, uh, for Visual Studio Code. We have our bot folder, which is where our source code lives for our, our bots. You can see the source folder in there. And we have a templates folder, which contains um, our app manifest um, templates and also our Azure templates, bicep templates for when we actually want to deploy this uh, into Azure and, and get this running uh, somewhere other than our own uh, machine. Um, so I'm just going to quickly jump into the, the bot folders. So uh, we've got a few folders in here, and I'll just quickly expand them. Um, so uh, if you've used Teams Toolkit before and you've maybe used the command bot uh, template, this kind of builds on top of the uh, of that template. So we have uh, command handlers, which is our instruction for our bot to to, to do something. Um, and uh, we have some card actions, which is, OK, when um, an activity button has been clicked on that uh, 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 on, on a card that's been added into um, our Teams chat by invoking that command, we can get the response. And we've got a couple of adaptive cards as well, just to kind of render uh, a, a bit of a UI and, and when we actually get a response um, as well. A few model um, files in there as well. And we have initialize uh, file, which is where our kind of bot configuration lives. So it, by default, we have a, a hello world command handler. So we're going to uh, invoke hello world and we're going to get a response. Um, and then we have a do stuff uh, action handler, which is going to be uh, invoked when we actually perform an action on, on one of the adaptive cards. Um, so I'm just going to skip quickly to a project that I've already created and I've already got running. Um, so here is my project. It's exactly the same as, as what I've uh, just shown you, um, but it, it's actively running. Um, I'm just going to show you a few things which I've done to get this running. Uh, in Teams Toolkit, I've actually authenticated with my um, uh, my Microsoft 365 tenant, and it's checked that I've got side loading enabled as well, which has allowed me to install my my app uh, locally and and have that uh, running. Um, and I've also then gone to the debug, selected my profile, which is Edge, uh, and hit F5, and and that started the the debug process, and it's installed the app for me and all the other resources that I need um, to uh, to run uh, this app in, in Microsoft Teams. So I'm going to switch to Teams. So this is the, the app that's already running. I've already sideloaded this into uh, Teams. And to invoke our, our bot, uh, we're going to invoke the uh, hello world command. So if I run hello world, I get a uh, a response with an adaptive card that has a button on it. And when I click do stuff, the adaptive card actually gets replaced. So what has just happened there is we've had a response that's come back to our bot. Now our bot has gone, OK, great. I've had something happen um, from from adaptive card that I've sent out. And now I can replace that uh, uh, that adaptive card with something um, that just confirms that, um, that, that that something has happened. It's a really, really basic example. But I'm going to show you something that's a bit more real world. This is a great way of being able to capture data as well, so through a form. Um, so I'll actually go through and, and, and show you that. So it's a bit more uh, real world. So. What I'm going to do is I'm going to jump through and I'm going to guide you through the steps of how to build out this form. And as I'm going through, I'm going to explain all the different areas um, of, of how this uh, this bot actually uh, works. So if I go back to my project. So the first thing that I want to do is I'm going to create a new adaptive card. So this is going to be a our our uh, response to our command. I'm going to paste in this adaptive card. Now, just to show you what this actually looks like, I've actually used a sample. So if you go to the adaptive cards um, website, there's loads of samples in here. If you scroll all the way down to the bottom, we've got a restaurant order, which is a form that has validation in it, has some uh, sample data and, a, a, and sample uh, adaptive card definition as well. So what I've done is I've taken that and I've made some slight adjustments. Um, I've 
dropped the version um, to 1.4 so that Teams uh, supports it. And I've also changed the action. So this is a button that allows us to place our order. And I've changed this to ex uh, action execute, and I've uh, provided a verb. So uh, what's happening here is when I actually click that button, a verb is going to be sent back to my bot saying, I've got an action here called order placed. Have you got anything to handle uh, that? And then a the handle is going to kick in and then uh, basically uh, work with the uh, with the response that, that we've got. So there is our adaptive card. What we're going to do now is I'm going to go to our models. And I am going to just paste in a load of interfaces. So this describes our our order form effectively for our adaptive card. This is going to help when we uh, are combining our template with some data. So the data to actually add um, items into the uh, into the drop downs in in that form. So we've got an, an order interface, which includes the form information, the individual order and, and some questions and, and the items of the actual drop down values as well. So next thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to create a new command handler. So this is going to be an order command handler. So what this is going to enable us to do is actually uh, create, uh, invoke a order command in our bot. Um, so what we do is we create a new class that implements this Teams FX bot command handler. So I'm just going to import that in. And then I'm going to implement the interface, which provides us with a trigger pattern and a function that essentially gets called when um, our bot basically picks up uh, that uh, someone sent a message to it with, with this particular uh, pattern. So I mentioned we want to order to be our keyword. So when orders put in, uh, it's actually going to fire this, this function. One thing which I'm going to quickly do is I'm just going to add the async keyword here to the uh, the command received function. So we, we actually need that. First thing is I'm going to create a constant which contains our, our data that we're going to pass into our adaptive card template. So in here you can see the different questions and the different values that we uh, that we have a uh, available. And then the next step what we're going to do is combine the data and our adaptive card and then return our adaptive card um, back to our, our our bot chat. So I'm just going to import some of these uh, statements. And I'm going to import our adaptive card as well, which I have to just do this manually. It's called order card. Adaptive cards and uh, oh. Order command response. Actually, bring in our order data type as well, which is in here. Yeah, so there's our model. So this is our command that's uh, going to get invoked. It's going to send a a an adaptive card back uh, as a response, and the button is then going to fire this uh, this response with an order placed verb. One last thing we need to do uh, for uh, to tell our bot that this handler actually exists. Uh, so if we go to the initialize um, file in here, I can add my new handler, which was our order command handler, and save that. So at this point, we've set up the, the actual command. The next thing we need to do is, is set up our handler to, uh, to pick up the, uh, uh, the values coming the other way. So what we will do is we'll create a, another adaptive card, which is going to be order placed. 
action response. Okay, so I'm going to paste this in here and it's simply just going to respond back with some confirmation of what we actually selected in the drop downs and then provide some extra buttons actually. So we could carry on if we wanted and add more action handlers in here and add more verbs um, so that you know the cards can basically roll into, uh, into one another. Uh, let's add our model as well in here so we're going to add in our um, response data and our uh, the shape for our uh, action data as well so this is going to be the shape of uh, the data that's going to come back from our form and um, so these at the entry uh, select val is an id that's actually in the adaptive card as well so it, it provides that that uh, uh, json object um, back to us Okay, now let's create our actions. So we've got an action here that's going to be the order placed. Action handler. And this time we're going to use a, a different interface, so the uh, adaptive card action handler from Teams FX. Let's implement that interface. I'm just going to quickly get rid of this because we don't need it. Uh, but we have our trigger verb, so similar to our trigger pattern, uh, we can actually put in our our verb in there. So when the verb is uh, detected, it's going to run our handle uh, action invoked method. So I'm going to make that async um, as well. Um, and one of the things that we're going to do, so we can see we've got our action data that's provided for us. This is the information that's submitted in the form. Uh, rather than this being an any, um, let's actually um, return that as order action data. So that's uh, strongly typed. And then what we're going to do is create um, our response data object. So this is um, our shape for the adaptive card that's actually going to be sent back in replace of our form. And I'll add that in here, same code. It's, it's very similar to the way that the, the actual uh, commands work. The response card, just import the card. Which is uh, oh, not a placed action card. No, response. That's where Copilot didn't help because it gave me the wrong thing. Uh, right, okay, so that is our our class actually created. And our final thing is we want to add our action, card action into our bot. Uh, so this is our order placed. Add the import, and now I can save this. So we've implemented command, implemented the action, implemented all of the adaptive cards. So let's go back to our adaptive card and put in order. And we have our form, which has all the values in. So I'm definitely going to have steak after this, maybe some noodles, and definitely coffee. I'm going to hit place order. And there we go. We have our response. We have our responses back to us. We have a button which we can carry on. We can add more actions and even provide edit orders, save orders as well. Uh, and that is time. That is the, the demo. Um, I'll not carry on, uh, Vesa. I'll let you take that back. Yep. <laughs> Excellent, Carol. Really awesome. This is a great demo, uh, great storyline, and great way of actually flipping those adaptive cards. So really, really cool. Thank you.